Hey, good morning, good morning, my brothers and my sisters. Still got the dehumidifiers working here at Churchtown. We are in that in-between time where we get a little warm and humid during the day. Really nice at night. Had choir last night. Got a lot of choir work to do, a lot of copying to do, a lot of three-hole punching to do. Got a lot of work to do for choir. This morning, I'd like to spend a little bit of time with you, just uh, enjoying a little time in the Word, if that's okay with you. Special Thursday morning edition. You know Thursday mornings are kind of special. Let me take care of that. There's the Churchtown Choir folder. Here's what I want to draw your attention to. Look at that. The Christmas Hymn Sing, Sunday, December 1st at 6.30 p.m. Now listen to me. You can come and enjoy this because it's really, really awesome and wonderful. But do you have a talent? Would you like to sing? Would you like to play? Do you have a group? Good morning, Barb. Come and join the Christmas Hymn Sing at Churchtown. It is a church town tradition. Let me grab a chair here with my fantastic camera work that's making everybody sick. And then we'll go inside the Word here today quick. I know, I'm awful, but I'm getting everything set up. Good morning, Liz. My friend. Look at that. So if you've never been here, you've just gotten the quick 360 degree tour of church town. I love this place. Are you allowed to love a place? Barbara, can you correct my theology on that? Are you allowed to love a place? There we go. I'll make you all more stable now. My two faithful watchers. Let me wave at Liz and wave at Barb. And let's just say this, right? Hey, Mary, how are you? We're going in the Word today. But we want to open up with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Out of Proverbs, I'm going back into the Psalms. Just one that has been, I've been riding in. I've been this abiding in this Psalm for a variety of reasons. It's going to be Psalm 77. Psalm 77. It's been a... This psalm has just been, been working on me and been working in me. Oh, come on. I am attached. Like, this is my office. How many people can boast of something such as that? That's my office. This is where I get to come every single day for a variety of reasons, you know? I just hope you all enjoy going to your place of work as much as I enjoy going to my place of work. You know what I did yesterday? My hands and my shoulders and my elbows are in such bad shape. Liz, I need help. I was running the Appalachian Trail yesterday and for the first time in a long time, yep, I fell and uh, just went down on my left knee. I threw my right knee out so I wouldn't hurt it. When the left knee and my hands and the rocks and the twisted fingers and I can't really move too well. Old guy, that tumble, I would have just rolled, I would have done two barrel rolls, popped up and kept on running 20 years ago. Yesterday I was like, I think I broke everything in my upper body and this morning I'm rolling out of bed like Kelly had to open the door for me to let Susie out oh well such is the life of an old fart where were we Psalm 77 we're gonna move through Psalm 77 today just spend a little bit of time in the word together a little bit of time in prayer and move on this morning uh, so much to do so much to do. Teaching tonight, teaching Monday. I'm just ready to enjoy my, uh, my day. My day was outside yesterday, uh, for the most part. I had a couple of visitations, um, <clears throat> but uh, did the, all of the outside work yesterday. Now I've got inside work today, as we say. 
everything from copying and printing to preparing lesson plans and everything. I know, right? Uh, look at the finger, how crooked it is. You think, is, is that normal? <laughs> oh, well. I want to share this psalm with you after we pray this morning. And I just want to share two different perspectives on it that I've walked through now the past few weeks because it's been a been quite a journey this summer has been quite a journey in so many different ways I've learned so much uh, in many ways I've grown so much uh, in many ways I have uh, been challenged spiritually emotionally physically been challenged uh, and I just uh, I came across this I was led to this uh, because uh, it's directly relatable at this point in time so why don't we go to, to, the word, to the Lord for a word of prayer and we'll enjoy this together. Like I said, I won't bother you too long today. We'll check back in tomorrow morning, see what's up. Father God, thank you so much for the opportunity to be together today. We love you. We thank you for our salvation, Lord, and we thank you for your Holy Spirit that guides us in all wisdom and understanding. Guide us now as we go into your word, Lord. And we pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, for all those who are afflicted spiritually, emotionally, physically today. We pray for our brother Mark Snyder, who's having an issue right now with his heart, Lord. May you guide the hands of the doctors and the medicines they use. And may you restore him 100%. 100% in the name of Jesus the Christ. We offer ourselves to you a living sacrifice. Amen. Hear these words. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That is normal. Hear these words and listen to the psalmist. And I think that we can all relate to the psalmist. But hear the second half of this psalm. I cry out to God, yes, I shout, oh, that God would listen to me. When I was in deep trouble, I searched for the Lord. All night long I prayed with hands lifted toward heaven, but my soul was not comforted. <clears throat> I think of God and I moan, overwhelmed with longing for his help. <clears throat> Excuse me. You don't let me sleep. I'm too distressed even to pray. I think of the good old days long since ended when my nights were filled with joyful songs. I search my soul to ponder the difference now. Has the Lord rejected me forever? Will he never again be kind to me? Is his unfailing love gone forever? Have his promises permanently failed? Are you hearing this? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he slammed the door on his compassion? And I said, this is my fate. The Most High has turned his hand against me. But then I recall all you have done, O oh Lord. I remember your wonderful deeds of long ago. They are constantly in my thoughts. I cannot stop thinking about your mighty works. Oh God, your ways are holy. Is there any God as mighty as you? You are the God of great wonders. You demonstrate your awesome power among the nations. By your strong arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. Hi, Bethany. How are you? Good morning. <clears throat> We're reading Psalm 77, just chatting. Welcome to Turning on the Lights. When the Red Sea saw you, O God, its waters looked and trembled. The sea quaked to its very depths. The clouds poured down rain. The thunder rumbled in the sky. Your arrows of lightning flashed. Your thunder roared from the whirlwind. The, light, the lightning lit up the world. <clears throat> New Living Translation. The earth trembled and shook. Your road led through the sea, your pathway through the mighty waters, a pathway no one knew was there. You led your people along that road like a flock of sheep with Moses and Aaron and their shepherds. That's 
That's significant. And when I was in a certain place this summer, feeling as though I was just done praying, if not forever, for a while, I was done worrying over all of this, if not forever, for a while. Um, I felt as though it didn't matter really what we did. Good morning, Bethany. And I shared some of this actually with the wedding party. It was that wedding party that helped show me the parting, right? It showed me the second half of this psalm. So it's a pretty amazing, I don't think it's coincidence, Bethany, that you checked in here this morning because I remember sharing with you there were some awful things happening and then I saw this with you guys and I was like, no, there's hope. But at any rate, we, uh, you go through that and, and you read that and isn't that so real? Pastor or no pastor, a believer, semi-believer, curious individual, whatever the case may be, you feel that way. You can't help but feel that way. We talked about how we are not puppets on a string and how this relational aspect of uh, with Jesus Christ can be complicated. It's not cut and dried. It's complicated, it's nuanced, it's layered, it's faceted, all of those things. And you go through seasons and I just felt rejected, utterly rejected, and I would, I would feel this way. Lord, do you know what I've done for you? And you're treating me this way? And even though I, like you know, like that's dumb, but you're feeling it, man. You're being Job and you're standing up and you're puffing out your chest and you're saying, do you, you do remember what I've done for you, right? I've given up this, that, and the other thing. I've done this, I've done that. I've done everything you asked. And now look at this mess. And he brought me to Psalm 77 and I was so stuck there that I remember talking with my friend Jim Grove, Jim and Jennifer, about uh, Psalm 77 and the, the, just the desperate feeling in the beginning of Psalm 77. And I said, and the funny thing is, I said, not the funny thing, I don't, probably didn't use that word. I said, and the thing is, when he goes on to discuss the rest of it, he never really resolves that. He just goes on to say what God used to do but what he's not doing now for me. That's where I was. Of course I'm not realizing that, Roger. Roger, have you never been stuck inside your own ego in your own wallow? Have you never been stuck in the pile of mud and crap that, of your own creation? Searching for the pods that somebody may throw to the pigs? where I was kind of still am a little bit but when I read 77 I was reading it that here we go right let's read this some of this again because it's all of this was happening you don't let me sleep I'm too distressed even to pray I'm too good to never oh I thought you said I'm just too good to never suck <clears throat> I think of the good old days, long since ended, when my nights were filled with joyful songs. I search my soul and ponder the difference now. Has the Lord rejected me forever? Will he never again be kind to me? Is his unfailing love gone forever? Have his promises permanently failed? That's some powerful stuff. And then when we go on to read it, but then I remember what you have done, Lord. But then to me at that time, it was like, okay, you're not addressing me. You're, I, I look back and I say, look what you've done. Hooray for them. Hooray for the Israelites. Hooray for everybody who is, else is saved and knows the Lord because I don't. Hooray for them. Why, yeah, get, go on. Tell me more about other people.
God is bringing out this psalm as an example of my rejection in saying, even though I am rejected, I look over and I see all of those who have not been rejected. Thanks a lot. Thanks for the positive reinforcement. But then I was talking with Jim and Jen. And I remember Jim saying, uh -uh, I think you're seeing this all wrong. And the moment when, the moment when he, the psalmist is at his lowest, is when he reverts to God's promises. And he begins to remember that God is the God of history. God is a sovereign God of all creation. God has, he said he was going to do all of these things and he did them. So therefore, there is no reason to believe that he has abandoned you in any way, shape, or form. That was the sum of it. Jim and Jen said it much more succinctly than I did, and he's a very good teacher. Um, and it made me begin to look a little bit differently at the psalm and at the situation, you know, in my own cocoon of darkness. Oh, Lord, every promise that you have made has thus far come true. I remember your mighty hand in my life. I, and if we want to take this out of the psalm and put it back and say, you remember what you've done for me? What did Willy Wonka say? Wait, stop. Reverse that. I can remember what you have done for me, O oh Lord. Remember how you brought me out of the world and into this calling. Remember my salvation and being redeemed and becoming a son of the Most High God. Remember the supernatural transformation for me and my family and the movement from one place to another. The almost literal parting of the Red Seas just for me to make this possible. Because in the world, according to jobs and benefits and all of the, this, is, this was impossible to do. A family of four, a kid in middle school, a kid in high school, two cars, a house payment, up to our ears in debt and in the world. How is this possible? All of that made possible by the Lord. I could tell you a hundred supernatural stories. Then I really began to understand Psalm 77. The Lord doesn't come and go, right? And Jim and I were talking about this yesterday. The Lord is here. What it looks like and sounds like and feels like and all of those things can be different just like it would, is different with you and your friends and your human acquaintances. It is different, but the Lord is here. He hasn't gone anywhere. He hasn't left me to my own devices. We see in Scripture that that is an option for him because he is sovereign. But I have done nothing along those regards that he would turn his back and say, I'll leave you to your own devices until you're ready to come back. But he is behaving differently as a free moral agent. He's behaving differently toward me. And I'm supposed to grow within that. Not whine and moan and complain. So what I love about the psalm is though, because here we are feeling this way. Feeling this way. Feeling this way. But then I remember, Lord... As the psalmist remember, what I remember what you have done for me. I remember the parting of my Red Sea. I remember the mighty storms that you have cleared. I remember your sovereignty in my life. And I have no reason to believe that all of your promises will not be fulfilled.
I have no reason to believe you're going anywhere or have gone anywhere. Just, just needed to remember. I just needed to remember. Amen? Do you need, I'll be like a typical devotionalist today. Do you need to remember today? But that's a great question that we can ask ourselves when we in front of the mirror. Do you need to remember today? Are you wallowing like the psalmist in Psalm 77? Do you need to remember what God has done for you? And you say, I, I don't know, I don't even... Your salvation. Let's begin with your salvation and work from there. Is that not enough? Let alone the sustenance, the physical, the emotional, the spiritual sustenance that is given you every single day. The manna from heaven, the bread of life, the living water. Should I go on? I needed to go on in my own life. You say count your blessings. Okay. So oftentimes we mean that so superficially. Oh, wow, yeah, you're right. I do have a nice car. and a... What? How about your salvation? How about the spiritual, the emotional, the physical sustenance? that you receive every single day? How about the living word of God? How about the manna from heaven? How about the living water? How about the light in the darkness? How about all of that? We count as ours because we are in the kingdom. We received our inheritance. We remember like the psalmist of Psalm 77, we remember what God has done for us. And even though you're feeling as though, well, he's not done much for me lately, shame on you, shame on me. Because that's exactly what I was saying to him. Yeah, but look at me now. Humans just can't stop being humans. Feed the flesh. Feed this egocentric brain of mine. And come back. Come back to the living word. Psalm 77 is a piece of work. Yes, Michelle. Got you. So there we go. Folks, we were praying for Mark earlier, Michelle, and now we're, you know, we know that he's having a catheterization again as soon as possible. West Shore Hospital, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father God, let your Holy Spirit calm Michelle, calm Mark, and guide the hands of the surgeon as they do what they need to do. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, let the healing come. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. We'll get him fixed up, Michelle. Don't you worry. So you feeling me? I wanted to share that with you today. Because the Lord was giving me food. He was saying, look over here. Here's my word for you. You dolt. And then when I read his word, I was like, see, look, you're just you're piling on. That's what I thought. When the Lord led me to Psalm 77 in the like, spiritual condition I felt, I was like, you're a jerk. You're piling. This is piling on. Seriously. Can we be real? <laughs> can we be honest? Why are you piling on? Are you trying to push me over the edge? And then it took my great friend as the Lord spoke through him and said, no, 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 Brian, you're looking at Psalm 77 from an internal, completely selfish perspective. The psalmist is indeed feeling that way. But then he remembers every promise that God made and how he lived up to them. He remembers God's sovereignty and how that is demonstrated on the earth and in his life. And he's saying, can't you remember that, Brian? 
I guess the Lord has never done anything for you, for you to remember, huh? I was like, sorry, repent. Now, do you need to look in the mirror today and remember what the Lord has done for you? Let's begin with our salvation and take it from there. But, but, but I still have aches and pains, but I still have a, a bad diagnosis. Yeah, I know. But when we're talking about the essence of our spiritual being, <clears throat> when we're talking about our salvation, we're talking about existing in the will of God and being satisfied, experiencing love and hope and peace and joy regardless of our circumstances. That's where it is. My circumstances came on in and made themselves at home within me. That's, that's not what's happening here. God's Holy Spirit, God Himself, comes on in and makes His home within me and kicks those things out out and I remember that I remember that so my brothers and sisters practice what you preach live in the power of God's will and the excitement of God's promises So let's read this one more time. Do you want the New Living Translation? We have to get going here again. I just wanted to share this with you today. <clears throat> Psalm 77. I'm going to read it. I'm going to pray. If you guys have anything that you need to talk about, if you need to share, you can, uh, what do the kids say, PM me. Or if you want to make it more communal, you can put it here in the messages and we'll all pray for you. It will be public, but mostly the people that will get notifications will be the folks here. If you want a cache of individuals who I know pray, praying for you. If not, let me know. But as Christians, I just want you to know, as Christians, as human beings, been there and done that. We're standing on the promises of Christ our King. The old hymns, they ain't wrong. I cry out to God, yes, I shout, oh, that God would listen to me. When I was in deep trouble, I searched for the Lord. All night long, I prayed with hands lifted toward heaven, but my soul was not comforted. This was me. I think of God and I moan, overwhelmed with longing for his help. You don't let me sleep. I'm too distracted even to pray. I think of the good old days long since ended when my nights were filled with joyful songs. I search my soul and ponder the difference now. Has the Lord rejected me forever? Will he never again be kind to me? Is his unfailing love gone forever? Have his promises permanently failed? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he slammed the door on his compassion? Whew. I said, this is my fate. The Most High has turned his hand against me. But then... But then I recall all you have done, O oh Lord. This is where I was misreading. Because I was interjecting. But then I recall everything that you had done for everyone else, O oh Lord. And it was making me even angrier. Thanks, Jim, for setting my mind straight. But then I recall all you have done, O oh Lord. I remember your wonderful deeds of long ago. They are constantly in my thoughts. I cannot stop thinking about your mighty works like my salvation. Oh God, your ways are holy. Is there any God as mighty as you? 
You are the God of great wonders. You demonstrate your awesome power among the nations. By your strong arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. <clears throat> but evidently, that's not enough for Brian because I'm so special. Listen to this. When the Red Sea saw you, O God, its waters looked and trembled. The sea quaked to its very depths. The clouds poured down rain. The thunder rumbled in the sky. Your arrows of lightning flashed. Your thunder roared from the whirlwind. The lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your road led through the sea. Your pathway through the mighty waters, a pathway no one knew was there. A pathway no one knew was there but you. Whatever you're experiencing right now, there is a pathway through it that no one knows is there. And maybe right now, not even you, but he does. He does. And he's not going to be the one to abandon or turn their, his back on this relationship. You will be. Don't do it. Take it from me. Don't do it. He will show you the pathway through. Through. Not around. Not dissolving your problems. Not making you or them disappear. He will show you the pathway through. It may be a grind. It may be the most difficult thing you've ever done in your life or ever thought even about doing in your life, but he will show you the pathway through and there is no safer place you will ever be than embedded in his will, regardless of your circumstances. <clears throat> Your road led through the sea, your pathway through the mighty waters, a pathway knew, no one knew was there. You led your people along that road like a flock of sheep. Thank you, Jesus, with Moses and Aaron as their shepherds. So, Father God, we just come to you today a very humbled people, humbled and grateful for who you are and what you have done and what you have promised and how constant and steadfast you are. We are unfaithful, Lord. Our emotions waver. Our level of commitment, our <sighs> egos, our selfishness get in the way so much. Lord, thank you for being you. Thank you because we trust, because we know and we trust that you you have the pathway through. You know the pathway through that, through that no one else knows is there. You know the pathway through. And you will lead your people, us. You will lead your people individually and collectively through it. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ, Lord, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your healing word. Thank you so much for your healing love. Amen.